Can you imagine what would happen if animals live alone by themselves? Or maybe in such a big group? Different animals have their distinctive behavior. There are animals which want to live by themselves and there are also animals which prefer to live in small or larger groups. Hello children, how are you feeling today? I do hope you're feeling fine. Thank you for watching ITTV. Today, we are going to talk about some distinctive behaviors of animals and recognize that some animals actually live alone or in solitary and there are also animals that live in groups. That's what we are going to talk about. Hi children, welcome back. When you see gorillas, do you feel afraid? Are you scared? Well, I am. Many people actually portray gorillas as aggressive and dangerous animals. Well, little do you know that actually these gorillas are really shy and peaceful animals. Gorillas live in groups or better known as troops. Gorillas live in groups for protection. Each troop is led by a dominant male called the silver bag. It is called the silver bag because, can you see in a picture, this adult male has got a silver lining on its back. This dominant adult male, the silver bag, ensures that their troop is safety. It also brings the other group members to the feeding sites. They also are in charge of making decisions for the troop. Besides that, the mother gorilla and the other siblings also take care of their young together when they live in groups or troops. Children, have you ever seen like ants when they are around your house going to someplace sweet? They are actually moving in a long trail. You can count. How many ants are there? There are a lot, right? Ants live in groups known as colonies. There are many different types of ant species. Have you ever noticed some ants, there are the red ants, the fire ants. When the fire ants bites you, ouch, you feel that it's really painful. Well, these ants, they actually live in groups and each ant has got their own specific function. This function enables them to live in a very well-organized colony. Have you noticed that some ants, they have wings and some do not have wings. Can you take a wild guess which ant have wings and which does not have? Hmm, yeah, the queen ant and the male ants are the only ants that have wings. Whereas, the female ants do not have wings. Why? Because the male ants have to fly to a new place to build a new nest. The female ants, however, will stay in their own old nest and fix the nest and gather new food for the other members. Do you know that? Dolphins, they are actually not fish. Have you seen dolphins before? Well, you can see it in the Langkawi Island and also overseas. It is quite hard to spot dolphins, right? Especially in our oceans. But it is quite easy to see it in cartoons. Right, children? Okay, dolphins, they live in small groups called pods. These pods can accumulate of up to more than a dozen species. I just told you, right, that the dolphins are not fish, but they are mammals. Why are they mammals? Because these dolphins, they are warm-blooded and they give birth. Dolphins do not lay eggs, huh? Okay. Dolphins, they live in groups. They live in groups for their advantages. When they are in groups, these dolphins can actually take care of their injured or ill young. And when they have difficulty in breathing, they will help them up to the surface of the water. Living in groups also helps the dolphins to find food easily. Let's take a look at what are the other animals that live together. The lions. 
The lions live in groups. Living in groups can enable these lions to hunt easily. These lions cannot run really fast. So, they will gather around their prey and they will hunt and they will bite and eat on their prey. Do you know that the lion, the male lion, they do not go for hunting, but instead the female lioness goes for hunting. When they have gathered their prey or their food, these female lions will eat their prey. But when the male lion comes, he will shoo all the other female lions away so that he can feast on the prey. But what about the baby cubs? When the baby cubs wants to eat the food when they are hungry, they will go and look for their food. But this male lion will actually go away or share their food with the baby cubs. In English grammar, why do people say a school of fish? Because the fish, they live in groups. Living in groups enables the fish to act as a camouflage. They will swim in a big group and when they swim in a big group, this, their predators will think that, oh, this is a big fish because they cannot distinguish between like each individual fish. They will look as if it is a big fish. Wolves also live in groups. Living in groups enables the wolf to hunt easily just like the lions, the zebras. The zebras are other examples of animals which live in groups. Living in groups enables them to act like a camouflage system. What color are the zebra stripes, children? Yes, they are black and white. These stripes, the black and white stripes, actually confuse predators and enables them to escape predation. The lion, which are colorblind, will look and think, oh, the black and white stripes, are they grass? This enables the zebra to run away before these lions actually realize that they are zebras. Why do animals live in groups? Animals live in groups for protection, to survive or su escape from their enemies. They also live in groups to work together, just like the hardworking ants, to look for food and build nests together. Animals live in groups also for nurturing. These animals nurture injured or sick group member. Can you tell me some examples of animals living in groups that actually take care or nurture their injured young? Yes, the dolphins. Remember I told you just now that when there are injured individuals in their groups, the adult dolphins will actually help their baby dolphins up to the surface of water to breathe. Children, not all animals live in groups. There are also animals which prefer to live alone or in solitary. Can you give me some examples of animals that live in solitary? Can you also tell me why they want to live in solitary? Let's take a look. Animals live in solitary because they do not have to share their food with others. Animals also live in solitary so that they do not have to share their shelter space. The tiger is an example of animal that lives in solitary. After a tiger finds its territory, it marks its territory with scratch marks and urine. This serves as a warning to the other tiger or other animals so that they do not come into their territory. Wow, aren't the tiger fierce? Let's take a look at another example of animal that lives in solitary. The panda. The panda eats 12.5 kilograms of bamboo a day. A huge appetite they have, don't you think so? It is because of their huge appetite that they want to live in solitary. This enables them to avoid competition for food, which is the bamboo. The rhinoceros. The rhinoceros also lives in solitary. 
Although they live in solitary, they also have to come together once in a while to mate. The octopus is also another animal that lives in solitary. Children, the octopus is not afraid to live in solitary. Why? The octopus are able to protect themselves. When enemies come nearby, they will squirt black ink over their enemy's face and automatically the enemy gets blinded. Ouch! Another thing is, these octopus, they have their own camouflaging system. They will change their skin color to that of the background and this avoids predation. These clever octopus, they accumulate the spines, bones and spikes from the leftover meal in front of their den. Therefore, this will create an image as if there is a big huge animal living inside the den. This will scare other animals from even coming near their den. Clever, aren't they? Other examples of animals that live in solitary are such as the tapir and the bear. Although some animals live in solitary, they will still have to come in contact with their opposite sexes at least twice in their lives. What is the meaning of opposite sexes? Well, the males and the females, they have to come together at least two times or twice in their lives to court and breed. Besides that, although some animals live in solitary, when they are young or when they are still in their infant stage, they have to stay with their mother until they are able to hunt for their own food and cope on their own. Now children, can you remember what we have learned just now? We have talked about animals which live in groups and also animals which live in solitary or alone. Can you recognize the animals if I give you some examples? What about the dolphins? Yes, the dolphins live in groups. What about tiger? Yes, the tiger live alone. Remember children. Now, now that you have remembered all our lessons, we can move on to the exercise. Which of the following animals live in groups? A. Tapir B. Bear C. Gorilla and D. Octopus What is the answer, children? Remember, we have discussed just now that tapir and bear, they live in? Yes, solitary. Whereas, gorilla, they live in a big group or troops and they are led by a dominant male known as the silverback. Can you remember? And what about the octopus? The octopus are not afraid to stay alone because they can squirt black ink on their enemies and make their enemies go blind. The answer is obvious, isn't it? So the answer is C, Gorilla. Well done, kids. Let's move on to question number two. The table shows two groups of animals, group X and group Y. Which animals are grouped in group X, children? The ant and wolf. And in group Y, we have Rhinoceros and bear. What is the similar characteristics of ant and wolf which makes them be grouped into group X? Ant and wolf actually lives in a group, whereas rhinoceros and bear lives in solitary. Which of the following can be placed into X and Y? Now, how do we find the answer? We have to find an animal which actually lives in groups so that they can be grouped under group X. And for group Y, we have to choose the answer which has an animal that lives in solitary. Which of the following can be placed into X and Y? A. Cat in group X or 
eagle in group Y. B. Zebra in group X. Tiger in group Y. C. Rhinoceros in group X. And elephant in group Y. Or is it D. Whale to be grouped in group X. And wild buffalo to be grouped in group Y. And the answer is... B. Zebra should be assigned in group X and tiger should be assigned in group Y. Why is that so? This is because zebra, they live in big groups. Remember, they camouflage each other when living in big groups? Yes, this is why they are grouped in group X. They live in big groups. And tiger, however, is grouped in group Y because they live in solitary. Remember, they do not like to share their food and their space. Let's move on to question number three. Ants are very hard-working insects and they live in groups called A. Pots, B. Herds, C. Troops, or D. Colonies. Now, children, we have discussed just now. What are the animals which live in groups called pods? It is the dolphins. They live in a big group called pods and this gives them an advantage. This enables them to feed easily and also protect their injured young. What about B? Herds, a herd of elephants. Living in a big herd enables the elephant to protect each other. C. Is it C? A troop of ants? I don't think so. A troop. Animals that live in a troop are gorillas. Remember, they are led by a dominant male called the silverback? And D, colonies? Yes, the answer is B, a colony of ants. Easy, isn't it? Now, let's move on to question number four. State two advantages of living in solitary. What is the meaning of advantages, children? Advantages means benefit. So, what are the good benefits when they stay in solitary? Can you tell me the answers? Or, let's take a look. Living in solitary enables animals to avoid competition for food. A good example is the giant panda. It has to eat up to 12.5 kilograms of bamboo a day. This huge appetite makes them want to live alone or in solitary so that they do not have to fight with others for food. What is the other advantage of living in solitary? To avoid competition for space. Let's think of an example of animal which lives in solitary to avoid competition for space. Um, what about the tiger? Yes, the tiger defends its territory by using urine or scratch marks so that they can warn the others not to come near. Now that we have learned so many animals and know that which animals actually live in solitary and which animals actually live in groups, can you tell me why they want to do so, living in groups or live in solitary? Yes, they live in solitary to avoid competition for food and space. However, they like to live in groups so that they can cooperate to take care of each other, to find food for each other and protect their young from being harmed. We have talked about so much right just now and we've also stumbled across so many difficult words. What's the meaning of competition? What's the meaning of defending and other more? So we're going to talk about this and tell you the meaning of each word in the vocabulary section. Cooperation means bekerja sama. The ants cooperate with each other in a colony. Competition 
competition is Persaingan. Animals live in solitary to avoid competition for food. The another reason that animals live in solitary is to avoid competition for space. Mate, the man. Although animals live in solitary, they will still have to come together at least twice a year to mate. Offspring, keturunan. The adult dominant silverback gorilla and the other adult females takes care of their offspring in a troop. Solitary Menyendiri There are two groups of animals. We can group them into animals that live in solitary or alone or also animals which live in group. Safety Keselamatan And the last one, territory, kawasan. The tiger marks its territory with urine. Wow, so much words. I hope you remember them because they are important for your understanding. We'll go to the fun part now, the trivia section. Tell me the answers if you know. Take a wild guess if you are unsure and think if you do not know. Children, what is the fastest animal on land? The answer is cheetah. Cheetah is also another example of animal that lives solitary. Knowing that cheetah is the fastest animal on land, do you know why the cheetah has to run so fast? The answer is, the only animal which comes in a close second to the cheetah's amazing speed is its favourite prey of food, the gazelle. In order to catch up with a meal that runs as swift as the wind, cheetah had to develop the ability to run as fast or even faster than the gazelle or face the alternative, which is starvation. This is the picture of a cheetah chasing after its lunch, the gazelle. Do you know that if the cheetah is not able to run so fast, and if it runs slower than its prey, the gazelle, then it would not be able to catch the gazelle. What happens then? The cheetah will have no food to eat. Children, do you also know that kangaroos, they can swim? To avoid predation, when there is a river nearby, these kangaroos will hop to that river and swim so that they can run away from the predators. After looking at so many animals, can you remember which animals actually live in group and which animals actually live in solitary? And children, you have to also remember why they want to live in groups and why they want to live in solitary. Let's do a quick recap. Animals live in solitary to avoid competition for food and also to avoid competition for space. Whereas animals live in groups such as the gorilla, dolphins, fish and wolves, they live in a big group so that they can take care of their baby when the baby are injured. They can work together or cooperate together to look for food for their young and also escape predation. We have learned so much today. I hope you had a fun time with me and I'll see you in the next lesson. Do your homework children, remember what we have learned.